This is a cutaway of the main bearing assembly of a 35 pound Milner. The 50 pound main bearing assembly is identical, except it has different sized parts. Hi, I'm Leroy Trevine with the Pellera Milner Corporation. This training video will instruct as to the correct procedure for changing the bearings in this housing. Our actual demonstration will be in a plant environment with a new machine. In the field, and depending on the condition of the particular machine you're working on, your job may look quite different. The technique, however, will be the same. Before viewing our in-plant demonstration, there are several items that require discussion. The only reason the actual housing itself should ever have to be changed is if it breaks, and that's not very likely to happen. Also, it's a bit more difficult to replace the housing because its front flange is sandwiched between the rear console and the shell assembly. To remove the housing, the shell assembly must first be removed. Because these assemblies are not so difficult to rebuild, we recommend the rebuilding rather than replacing. That's the subject of our video, the rebuilding of these bearing assemblies. To rebuild these bearing housings, it is not necessary to remove the shell assembly. By simply removing this front seal holder and this rear seal holder, all components inside the housing, including the shaft and bearings, can be removed through the front of the housing. As you watch the demonstration, you notice that we use two machines. From one, we've removed the shell assembly because it's extremely difficult, if not impossible, to film this procedure with the shell assembly in place. When you are performing this procedure, the shell assembly remains in place. Let's look closely at the cutaway we've prepared. We see the main shaft, which must be removed through the front, the rear bearing, and the front bearing. If you look very closely here, behind the front bearing, you can see a bearing backup washer or thrust washer. This washer is on all 35-pound housings. Not 50-pound housings, but 35s only. In some instances, when removing the front bearing from the shaft, if you are unaware that the thrust washer is there, you may not notice it coming off. If the bearing is replaced without the thrust washer being put back on the shaft first, the entire shaft and cylinder assembly will sit about an eighth of an inch too far forward. This will cause the cylinder to scrape the shelf front as it rotates. Here you see the three front shaft seals. All three are mounted inside this front seal holder. When these bolts are removed and the seal holder pulled out, the three front seals come out with it. These two O-rings seal the space between the front seal holder and the bearing housing. These two seals are the water seals and will either be all rubber or if they have metal casings, the casings will be made of stainless steel. Here is a renewable seal sleeve on which these two seals ride. This third seal is the oil seal and holds the oil inside the housing. There is a leak off hole at the bottom of the housing to drain this cavity which is located between the water seal and the oil seal. 
If you were to look under the machine from the rear, you could see a 1 8 inch pipe nipple which is screwed into this hole. If the water seals fail, the water will drip from this nipple. If the oil seal fails, oil will drip from it. If this should happen, it's a warning that the seals are bad and should be changed. Both front and rear bearings are two-piece type cup and cone bearings. The cup portion or outer race of the front bearing is pressed into the housing by pushing the seal holder in place, as you will see during the demonstration. The cup or outer race of the rear bearing is pressed into the rear seal holder. Again, using our cutaway, here we see the rear seal which is pressed into the rear seal holder. Also, between the rear seal holder and bearing housing is a set of shims. The different colors designate different thicknesses. The amount of shims actually sets the two and a half to three thousandths clearance needed in the bearings. If a new bearing replacement kit is ordered from Milnor or one of our dealers, one of its components will be a new set of shims. When removing the old ones, save them. Put new ones back in using the same quantity and colors as were removed. That should reset the bearing back to the two and a half to three thousandths clearance required. One last detail, lubrication. The housing requires only 22 to 24 ounces of a good grade of heavy duty, non-detergent SAE 30 weight motor oil. Any more or less oil than 22 to 24 ounces and the housing will not be properly lubricated. These two plugs are at the top of the housing and are the holes through which the oil is poured. One will act as a vent while the other a fill. It doesn't matter which is which. This plug at the bottom of the housing, which is a magnetic plug, is for draining the housing. The design of this housing is ingeniously simple, yet tremendously effective. Now we'll move to the in-plant demonstration. Before we begin our step-by-step -step explanation, let's take a look at some of the tools and parts necessary to do this job. There are several hand tools required plus the mechanical basket pulling fixture. The parts required are contained in the bearing and seal kit. This is a shaft on which the bearings and seal sleeve have already been replaced. The first step in replacing the bearings in the main bearing housing is to remove the shell front. Disconnect the wires on the electric door interlock, turn the electrical conduit down, then remove the shell front ring and gasket. This allows a screwdriver to be placed between the shell front and shell in order to pop the shell front off. A T-handle wrench is used for removing the basket retaining bolt in the rear center of the basket.
Remove the basket retaining bolt and retainer, which exposes the two pulling holes underneath the basket retainer. Then remove the bolt only from the retainer and reinsert it back into the shaft. This will be used to push against when the mechanical basket puller is put in place. This mechanical basket puller will be used to remove the basket from the tapered shaft. The puller is attached to the basket and the basket is then pulled. Jimmy removes the main drive pulley from the rear of the machine. There's only one way to remove a taper lock bushing tie pulley. Remove the bolts that are holding the pulley and bushing on the shaft. Put them into the pulling holes and then evenly from side to side tighten the bolts which pushes the pulley off of the bushing. Once the pulley has been released from the bushing, you can then snap it off of the shaft. These are the two machines we're using for our demonstration. It is not necessary to remove the shell assembly to do this job. For purposes of clarification only, we're going to film this procedure using the machine on the left. These set screws are being removed to expose the jacking holes which are used to remove the front seal holder. Next, remove the four bolts which hold the front seal holder in the bearing housing. These two bolts will be used to pry or jack the front seal holder out of the housing. When tightening these bolts, be sure to tighten a little at a time from side to side in order to pull the seal holder out of the housing evenly. Once the seal holder is loose from the housing, it can be easily pulled out. From the rear of the machine, place a block of wood against the rear end of the shaft and with a hammer, knock the shaft out the front of the machine. As you do this, 